taustatud kaunide kunsti filosoofia seminarist osavõtjad. Tere tulemast! Meie seminar on selline tore traditsioon nüüd juba korda aastas korraldada sellist. Mul on rõõm tutvustada meie tänast rektorit Kristjan Fischer Saksamaalt. Ja ta räägib ise täpsemalt ühesõnaga räägin lühidalt sellest meie tänase seminari üles ehitusest. Kristjaniga on kokku lepitud, et ta umbes tunni aja jooksul kõigepealt avab interdisciplinaarsuse mõiste, et meie teema on interdisciplinaarsus ja pärast seda toimub selline väike aruteluring, kus ma kutsun üles kõiki siin osalejaid rääkima enda kogemusest eelkõige sellisest interdisciplinaarsuse kogemusest. Loomulikult tõukudes siis Kristjani jutust. Pite, ma on palanud kiimus. Seal oli kirjas, et Leonora hakkab kell kaks esinema, kus see võib olla? Leonora ei hakka kell kaks esinema, Leonora tuleb ka siia, jah. Aga jah. Aga mingi lähele. Mingi lähele, juhu. Jah. Just kitchen. Jah, jah. Ah, okei. Okay, I'm very sorry, my Estonian is very, very weak. <laughs> only I have to speak in, I have to speak in English. Um, and you know, my brain is uh, a little, yeah, get, it's, it's getting old actually. <laughs> so um, I need some my some slides at least for me to remember so, properly, so that I don't talk nonsense here. Okay, uh, so what I did is. Um, if you're interested in, in, for instance, where I got those things from or some of the background that I'm talking about, I made a paper, a small paper, four pages, with some references in it. So you can have a look at it uh, if you want later. If you go to my website. So there is a, there is a post which is called Ramit Gax. And there you can just, if you go there, then you will find the, the text. And then if you click on the text, it's a PDF, just, just in case you might be interested. So first of all, thank you, Andrus, for inviting me. It's really a pleasure. I mean, sitting here in Ternu, yeah. sun is shining, uh, weather is good, so it's fantastic. Um, and it's funny that, that, you, that he called me because um, Right now, I'm in the middle of some kind of interdisciplinary project. Because uh, where I'm coming from, the academy, uh, I'm working with uh, computer science, yes. so programmers. Okay? But I am a designer uh, and a composer. So, you know, it, it's a big mix. And of course, to talk to computer scientists, this is already sometimes a little tricky because they have a completely different mindset. Um, so this is, but, but my project currently is the following. Um, we have, in my academy, we have uh, some kind of one semester, there is a, it's a practical semester for our students. So they go into a company and they work there. And then they come back and then they do their bachelor thesis. That means that they have to write reports. And very often I read in these reports that uh, our students are required to work in interdisciplinary teams. But during their studies, they're not used to do this. So for them, this is a big thing. You know? So then I thought, okay, what we need is, is one, at least one module, one class, one course, where we try to incorporate this interdisciplinarity. And this is currently what I'm doing. I'm, uh, I'm, I asked a friend or a colleague from cultural and social sciences, and I asked her to do a class with us. So this is what we're currently working on. What can be the topics and what can be the content of this class? So this is basically where I'm coming from and what I'm doing. So now let's just, uh, just get in there. So um, during my work and studies, and now what I'm doing with the social sciences, this whole topic of interdisciplinarity, oh, of working, working in an interdisciplinary environment uh, is a huge thing. Uh, I'm pretty sure you've all heard the terms before, interdisciplinary, and I'm also pretty sure that you all think or uh, that you all did work in some kind of interdisciplinary environment. 
still, um, why this is so important? Uh, I, have, I have a personal approach why I think this topic is still important. And that's why, because we have um, problems currently on the planet which are called wicked problems. And a wicked problem is a problem that you just cannot solve like that. A wicked problem is a problem which is hardly solvable at all. So climate change, overpopulation, and the idea that we live on a planet with uh, limited resources, but still live and pretend as if uh, economic growth could go on forever. I mean, you know, planet is just one entity and it's this big and we have this amount of resources. And on the other hand, we think like, hey, we can exploit it as we wish. But this is nothing that you can solve in an instant, so this is a wicked problem. And this is exactly where I think interdisciplinarity comes in. That's why it's so important. Because we have problems that can't be solved by one discipline. You know? It's several disciplines that need to work together to solve them. That's an important thing. <coughs> so, who of you worked in an interdisciplinary group before? And what was it? Uh, yeah, we work in, uh, we work together and uh, with dance, music, video, interact, uh, like most of it being interactive these days. Okay. And uh, also we work, we work with different groups within different projects for performances uh, where there have been the disciplines involved. Okay. So we kind of come, uh, for the simplicity sake, we come from dance background, but okay. uh, yeah. actually <laughs> it's not really true, because uh, I think a dance uh, project, it's, um, there is always music, there is always light, there is always text in our case at least, and, uh, but maybe the center is the body, the sort of uh, kinesthetic experience that you can give because we share a body, like maybe this but now, um, I don't know how long should no, I just, yeah, Go on, go on. It's <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, but uh, there was a change in our uh, own methodology uh, that in the beginning there were different artists. We had the composer, we had the light designer, and we think of uh, what to do and how to express a dance uh, still to keep the body like as a main object or somehow like that. And there, yeah, and. Uh, but then, uh, 2014, we started to use this actually mini B sensors that we can attach to our wrists and ankles, which uh, basically expanded the being or the body very practically. It just changed uh, because now the movement of the body, it's not just giving kinesthetic experience, but it also uh, really causes sound. It, it um, gives uh, sound experience, very literally. You can stop it, you can play it as an instrument, the sound. And uh, now the last project is about video, how movement uh, interacts and guides, changes everything uh, with the video in the background, for example, or, or light design. So uh, I, I see it as uh, the being has expanded itself and with that there has been so much new options and uh, new uh, challenges also and we kind of feel like new knowledge is coming because of this, but also need for new knowledge. And uh, how do you even think? So it's not. Uh, and my, I think, like for me, the quite exciting part is this: that uh, how to think about this interdisciplinary. Or now I feel like it's already uh, uh, almost like uh, something beyond there because um, it's not even between the disciplines. It's like a new thing. Maybe it's like a new discipline or something that. Uh, uh, that basically that you need the knowledge from the disciplines, you need to know something about the body, you need to know about the music, you need to know about the visuals, but you also need to ask this question why I'm doing it or what does it, uh, what's the potential or what, what am I doing, so this kind of a... It's, it's so if you work with sensors, there is also like programming involved a little bit? Yeah, very much so. Very much, yeah. okay, so then definitely you have a new discipline somehow, right? Yeah, because yeah. this is really... So. But still, I mean, the, the, the thing is that we talk about these things, there are several disciplines somehow involved, but in order to really understand what we're doing, I think it's, we should step quickly back and simply try to um, make a list of what kind of, well, disciplinarities there are, okay? So this is not like, this is not something that I came up with, of course, this is something which 
research, especially in the social sciences, uh, did already like, I don't know, 30 years ago, something like that, started with this. But still, let's, let's put, it, put it together. So the first thing, very simple, it's called intra. Intradisciplinary. Anybody an idea what this is for my team? Within a discipline? Uh, it's basically one. one. It's yeah. very simple. It's basically one discipline, okay? So one single discipline. Um, as an example, for instance, but you work as a group. So for instance, let's say uh, three carpenters who build a wooden house. They're all carpenters, they're all the same, so if one names a certain tool, the other one knows exactly what this tool is about, right? So it's the same maybe if, if you would work only with dancers, and you have like to do this and do this and do that, and they know exactly what is meant, but you're all dancing and that's it. So there, is a, there are certain visualizations for that, so that you can keep this better in mind. A very common is this one. Okay, so one discipline. Um, I like to put it like this. I like to put it. So. There can be several people, but they're all squares. They're all the same. Okay, <laughs> okay you get it? <laughs> okay, so because we're, yeah, we're, we're, a little, we're a little stupid here, okay? <laughs> so, the next one, um, the next one is called cross... Cross disciplinary. <sighs> what does this mean? This means that you basically link two disciplines. You know, you just link them, you put them somehow together, you know. This, for instance, an, an example would be, there is art and there is art history. So that you take regular history and you use it basically and there is art and you put it together and this makes art history. That's it. You know, so you're linking those two. But art still remains art, history still remains history, you got art history. So, there is... Uh, the a common sign for that would be, would be this. So we're from somewhere outside and observe, you know, something. That's it. And as I put it, uh, well, you know, we have a square and we have a triangle. You know, two different, two different kinds of discipline. We just basically get along together. That's it. So the third one is something which we are all, I guess, used to working, which is called multi so multidisciplinary stuff. So this is basically means that several disciplines are working together, heading towards the same goal, towards the same aim, you know, they all want to solve a certain problem. Um, but everyone still remains in their field of uh, expertise. So they all know something, they all work together, but everybody does his job or her job. So which is basically, you can, if we stay in this builder's um, example, you could say like a group of different builders. So there's an electrician, there's a carpenter, there's even an architect maybe, and they are building a house. So they have all the same goal, the house, but they have all completely different levels and different kinds of expertise. So the carpenter couldn't do the electric work, usually. You know? And in Germany, for instance, even if he would do so, you know, then the state would come, you know, people are like, no, 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 because if it now burns, no insurance will pay. So, <laughs> okay, so this is multi. And uh, my, uh, still, you know, it's, yeah, well, there are several, so it's, you know, it's, we're getting close, we're getting closer to something a little more special, but slowly, okay, so there's more than one discipline, because cross-discipline usually works like with, with two disciplines, right, so with two and um, multi, there are more, but everybody stays in that field, uh, so it's slowly graduating, the next one, and this is what we are talking about today, but what you described is also then could be somewhere between this step, which follows now, and the last one. So this one is the one we're talking about today, basically, which is interdisciplinary. 
So this means that you integrate ideas and knowledge from another discipline into your own, or vice versa. So that, mean, that means, for instance, in your case, for instance, um, the programming that you use, you don't use to, I don't know, program some app or some smartphone stuff or the web design or whatever chips, but you integrate stuff there and you have to build it this way according so that you can use it for the sensors for the dancing. And the sensors you also use for the purpose of dancing, so they're not sensors like we usually try to measure stuff, you know? So you incorporate stuff from other things, from other disciplines in your own discipline. So uh, my example here is that a designer is using problem-solving strategies from computer science because they think in a different way. When they have a problem, they, you know, the way they solve it, it's different than a designer or an artist would work, usually. Um, exactly. So, um, ah, I forgot this one. So let's touch this one, you know. They're getting closer, and you have like one, two, four, something like that. So the inter inter is something like that. Think about it like that, right? So you find some kind of things and topics that you can incorporate into your own. And I have. Um, how I do it is like that. So the square is becoming more round. I'm, I'm not good at that. <laughs> so the square is becoming more round. And the triangle, you know, you get already some different forms inside. Or, I don't know, you have a, you know, you have, you have a triangle cut out there. I, I said I'm not, I'm not good at that. Okay, so, so things, the shapes begin to merge somehow. And then this is the Olympus, this is the highest whatever we have there. We can achieve, which is trans. Transdisciplinary. And this is because this is, this is a little how you described it. Because um, when you work this way and you work very intensively this way, you might achieve this and suddenly work this way, where you basically build something new, okay? It means like you develop a new integrated framework regardless of the discipline. So you build something new, something new emerges. So all of you from your different disciplines, you, you, um, you get your own language, your own problem solving solutions and processes build something new. And <coughs> oh god, let me try. So how I see it then when we have is this we have like something like that, you know? So we begin it's it looks a little like that because somehow you know it's a circle because somehow in the end when you have a new discipline, you know, uh, and then after years and years of working maybe um, you, you give yourself a name and, and the world and history calls you in a way and suddenly you were back here to square one, right? <laughs> so this is a circle actually. Semios. Yeah, <laughs> right? This is, this is how it works actually, you know? Because you forget like where you came from and you forget all the backgrounds and you have something new and suddenly, you know? So, so this basically... At some point you're back there, just back to square one. Okay. So this is this is actually this is you find these these images in uh, several papers and, and books uh, about the topic. I don't I don't know why, but I, I want you know for me it was I just I built my own stuff. It was basically just for me for myself. Okay. So th these are the things, and we're talking about basically this today. So which means like again you integrate uh, approaches from several disciplines. So, now when you look at your work, where, where are you, or which, which of those did you do, and where, and how, and what did you do there? So, wh where would you consider yourself now, currently? Somewhere in between, or 
Yeah, and figuring out the potential for what it actually can give. Uh, and uh, I recognize very much that the multidisciplinary part uh, when it was really the knowledge from different, and then they also were uh, coming from different people. But now we've been sitting together here, so we're very tightly like uh, together and asking this. Uh, uh, with, 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 it's about knowledge. I feel like we need more knowledge or something, and uh, then it can actually go. Uh, yeah, and it kind of comes from testing and trying also. Like you can't like plan it in a way. You have to fail and uh, see what worked and what didn't. So yeah. But yeah, somewhere there. So, some, somewhere somewhere yeah. in between. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and it's of course. I mean, this is just a schematic. Usually, life is not yeah. like that. But life is fluent, and you know, sometimes you might work a little more here, and sometimes you you work a little more there. It depends on whom you work with. What are your projects? Things like that. There's also I think there's also something about like with. Uh, so, for example, we work very closely together, so we have a lot of overlap in our fields of knowledge as well. But of course, there are also huge chunks that are not overlapping in uh, as well. So, there are like this. Um, uh, so, like at what point? Um, at what point could you start saying that it's really like uh, that we absolutely share uh, share an, uh, a field or share a knowledge? I guess there is some kind of a threshold. We would say like okay, now we now our overlaps are big enough that we can call that yeah. a thing in itself, a field. I think it's hard to recognize this from inside. Yeah. Somebody from outside who would look at you now and yeah. in five years, this person could, you know, yeah. probably be a little. Yeah. It, exactly. Just I reflected uh, one feedback I remember when I started to do this sensor work and first I started really connecting sound and movement and uh, uh, the feedback was we could see the sound and we could hear the movement so I felt like whoa like uh, really you could see, <laughs> you could see the sound uh, and uh, but it has been uh, with me like and, uh, and uh, yeah like uh, playing with expectation dance performance and suddenly you see the sound how would that be like uh, yeah. yeah and this is my personal opinion I think that especially in arts but also in design people are a little more open to utilize stuff, ideas from uh, different disciplines and integrate this into your own work. Because uh, a mathematician wouldn't do something like that usually. You know? A mathematician has the rules, the ideas, know how mathematics works, and then, I don't know, they would never think about, oh, let's look into a, so a sociology book, maybe I found some ideas there that could help me solve this mathematical problem. They, they wouldn't think this way. But if you express yourself through art, for instance, I guess you're much more likely to uh, incorporate different things. And you think, oh, this is interesting. Oh, let's see what I can do with that. Yeah. I, I think. But this is, this is my personal opinion. I don't know, man. Is, is there a mathematician here that could prove me wrong? Andrus is more. I am not a mathematician. <laughs> 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 Hans Gunter Lott is very good to <laughs> argue <Yeah>. with you. <laughs> yes, but he integrates math. To music, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? so we all you we are all users of mathematics, yeah, but uh, users, pure mathematician, I don't know, Matti Abel is only uh, who I know. That's yeah. pure mathematician. Lawrence, Lawrence, we call it. Peter Lawrence on puhas mat. Kes on nagu puhas matematik, ma idea. Pure mathematician. Yeah. I don't know in Estonia. Yeah, this, 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 this kind doesn't, of doesn't matter, you know. It's, it's, <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> yeah, well. But uh, may I also yeah, uh, sure. describe my uh, of my career, maybe, <laughs> uh, through this uh, scheme. And, uh, I am a beautist and I um, studied, played uh, mostly like uh, not works of uh, compositions of uh, com uh, composers and uh, some, uh, in some point uh, we uh, started to make some very uh, multi find uh, projects with um, Andros and Kai. Yeah. Uh, actually also when I worked in opera <coughs> theatre in orchestra, there is also uh, this uh, opera is a very good example actually uh, about uh, this multi uh, yeah. okay. because uh, there are not uh, orchestra is in uh, their world there then um, of course, for singers, there are uh, many things going already on, uh, singing as uh, music, uh, then text, 
and uh, uh, for, uh, yeah, uh, acting also and uh, kind of that. Maybe, uh, maybe in some point you may have a big circle, and then uh, also some circles which uh, include uh, different uh, yeah, sure, things. Sure. Uh, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Yeah. in some point, I also started to write uh, poetry. And now I am actually, I, I think I am in this uh, uh, interdisciplinary <laughs> uh, place because I, um, I play flute uh, and I mix it with uh, some poems. Uh, I, I also uh, get uh, some, uh, from some uh, words, I, I, uh, I uh, get uh, ideas how to uh, uh, play it uh, through the flute. No, uh, maybe, maybe uh, you know, uh, of course, you know, Kaya Saaria and his, uh, her works uh, with the uh, French language uh, spoken through the flute. Yeah. And I, I develop uh, this kind of things. <laughs> so when you look at an orchestra, for instance, because the, the thing is, an orchestra is made out of uh, a lot of different people well, they're all musicians, but I mean, you know it from music academies, how it works there, you know. So these guys work with those guys, and, but not with them, and, and composers and conductors, oh no, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> but although they're all basically working on the same thing, and with the same language, so they can really um, easily, so it's a little more than multi, because they have already the same language, but they come from, so, so the brays and the strings and so on, you know, so they, they are... All, Percussionists and stuff. So this is completely different, different, yeah. right? Inside the music. And the funny thing, which I think, which I, but this, I will, I will talk about this uh, in a second, is that um, our academies and the way how we educate in schools and in academies uh, is pretty much neglecting all of those things. We really think in disciplines. So it's not like you know we use math to describe something uh, which could be interesting or utilize math to describe something in nature, so in biology. At least not in Germany. I don't know how it's in, in Estonia in the schools, but in Germany it's, you know, it's very bad. And in the academy it's the same thing. So I need now to incorporate a, an extra course for interdisciplinary work with another faculty in my home university because our curriculum is so stupid, there is no such work there. So we're just educate them in the way that we educate them, but there is, you know, nothing else. And this is really sad, I think. So you have to find this for your own, on your own, right? But it would be nice if this would be already educated. Yeah. That you, hey, look there, oh, look there, oh, this is also mm -hmm. look and incorporate this, you know. But we, unfortunately, we don't do this. Um, but, any, but, but what do you think about the singers? They they are studying during le, all the education period, acting, choreography. Uh, dancing uh, of course uh, no no of course not but what we shouldn't we shouldn't really say like okay this is singing and it ends there that's the thing and this is how i think like many of, of the of the uh, uh, well it depends on it, it depends on the teacher you know it depends also on the teacher you know, on the academy but you know <laughs> i i think that uh, opera singing is more trans I think inter. No, 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 of closed space in between. Somebody like this could say like, well, whole opera is one discipline already, you know? Yeah. Because the differences between those people involved is not so huge as for instance, social, social sciences and physics or chemistry and uh, languages, you know? So this is, so we, we also have to think about what is a discipline here and what not, so. You know? but, but again there, you know, the definitions about what is what here, you know, what, what is a discipline and when, when does it really start and where does it end? This is, you know, it's, it's a liquid, you know, it's... Um, Can I ask you a question? 
Can and I say something? Yeah, sure. yeah I'm, well, I'm not an artist myself. I'm more like an art theorist and art critic and uh, art historian. And um, one thing I have noticed is that when I'm writing reviews about the exhibition or things like that, or editing the stories of artists, they have great in ideas inside their minds, but the audience cannot see it, cannot feel it. So my question is, uh, what is the criteria for these trans inter multi cross things? Uh, is this enough that the artist is writing a long story about his or her ideas, or it has to be really felt from the outside? Because uh, I have to be honest, sometimes for me, when I have to write a review, uh, <laughs> I can see that there's lots of going on inside of the head of the artist, mm -hmm. but maybe the practical part is not that um, visible. How about this? Yeah, well, this, this is more about the perception mm -hmm. of the artwork. Yeah. And this whole thing comes more from social sciences. Like I said, in social sciences, I really think about disciplines as really these disciplines mm -hmm. like math, chemistry, social science, and so mm -hmm. on and so forth. So this is really like, like something really different. And uh, in, their, in their mindset, an interdisciplinary team uh, is really like people from, from completely different worlds actually come together to work together. And, and, but what you're talking about is the, is the perception of an artwork. So this is, uh, well, this is a little something different. Then. Uh, yes, of course, it is different. But uh, my question is, um, was this kind of um, systems should be perceived at all from outside, or um, well? So that, like, for example, I'm going to the opera, yeah. and uh, there is an opera th singer who is doing his uh, her interdisciplinary thing, <laughs> combining it with poems and things. But for me, it's uh, just yeah, another course. opera. Of course, of course, this is this is basically it, exactly this. This is not really connected to that yeah. because what you have here is usually something that you use for uh, to reach. A goal, a common goal, to complete a task mm -hmm. as a group of people from different disciplines. Yeah. But what the outcome is, if it's good, if it's bad, if the audience can understand, can that understand it, or That's even even if you solve the problem, this has nothing to do with that. Okay. But the more you are aware of where you are mm -hmm. and what this is and how this works, yeah. the more likely it is for yeah, you to exactly. succeed. Because there are also some art projects where I can see, yes, perfectly, like, uh, I can get the idea, but not all the time, so, yeah. Um, so there are, there is one, one girl, uh, one lady, one lady, she, uh, Marilyn Stemper, um, she talks about this and she comes from the social sciences, and she comes up with, with three, actually, uh, I think, really, understandable ideas or arguments, major arguments, why uh, interdisciplinary work uh, is important. And she says that first thing, and as an artist this is totally clear to us, but for other disciplines it, it is maybe something different, this is the intellectual argument, which means that basically um, when, you, when you work on any kind of problem, on any kind of tasks, just looking at theories, concepts or methods from another discipline might help you. In, in the arts you usually call this like get um, um, not experienced, get an um, inspired. Inspiration? Yeah, get inspiration. Thank you. To get inspired. Okay? So you just look at something else and you get inspired. can be another artwork, but can be also a completely different discipline. And then you figure out, hey, let's incorporate this somehow. What is this about? You know? um, so this is the intellectual argument. The practical argument is that <laughs> very many of our, like I said in the beginning, very many of our problems now, and also of problems in a company, for instance, are usually, so why do a huge company working globally, their sales go down? and they can't figure out why. Because the product is still good, the money is still there, everybody's still happy, but nobody buys it anymore. What is it? Is it just marketing or what? So to figure out what is really going on, you know, this sometimes you need them to come together 
uh, in a group like that and figure out why the company, their sales are going down. Okay, so usually we have, or often we have like urgent problems or complex problems. So you need these teams. So the marketing guy, the guy from, from you know, the, the uh, sales and so on, they need to come together to figure out what is going on. And then there's the pedagogical argument that also in professional life you have tasks, they, uh, regardless of the context, um, they require these, uh, these skills to, um, to be solved. So therefore, this should be taught um, in the academy. It doesn't matter which kind of discipline. So these are her three arguments. But there is there's one thing. The question is why we need this sometimes. Why do we have this urge for groups from different disciplines? Why isn't there somebody who could say like, hey, no problem, I know it all. You know? Well, we have to think back just like two, three hundred years ago to the Age of Enlightenment, uh, in German Aufklärung, um, where before that time we had the so-called polymath. So, the, the scientists, the scholars, like Da Vinci, for instance, he was a great painter, he was an architect, he was an inventor, he was a sculptor, and so on and so forth. So, he knew it all, he knew a lot of stuff. So, everything came, basically was, was uh, came together in one person. But with the Age of Enlightenment, this changed completely, because we found then suddenly with machines coming up and all those things that life and the world becoming like a village because we you know figured out the world is a small place um, we realized that the world and its problems are too complex to be solved actually by one so then we came up with a brilliant idea which shaped our uh, way of how we think about science and research and we chopped it up into little, little, little pieces. We said, like, okay, there are architects, there are people that build ships, and there are people that do this and do this and do that. And in the same way as as, as this thought was was actually, you know, this chopping up happened. This chopping up also happened um, in education. So when you look, for instance, at artists in uh, in the Middle Ages. They were not only painting, but they were also writing about how they painted. They were talking about, they were, they were monks in the monasteries, they were talking about how they made the colors, for instance. So they were not only painting them, but they were always also thinking about the colors. They were thinking about brushes, they were thinking how, how to use it, on which kind of material, and so on and so forth. So this got separated, and that's why we have now art history, for instance, people who write about artists, you know, so, but maybe you're not an artist yourself, I don't know, like, you know but usually it's divided. Um, and the funny thing is, now that we know that everything is so complex and we have so many complex, uh, complex problems to solve, we go back there and we try, but now with many people, not with one polymath, we try to incorporate, build groups that have a mindset that, that can oversee the whole thing and solve the whole problem. So again, this is something we, we go basically back to square one, but not just for one person, but you know, for uh, we try to solve this with, with to bring many people together. So when you work yourself, maybe in uh, in one of those groups, you know, like here in the Inta, it's no problem. You all all speak the same language. You all know what you're talking about, right? So this is not the, this is not an issue. But the further we go this way, uh, one thing um, is, and I, <laughs> I experienced this several times, um, which means um, working in those teams is tricky because you lack the same language. And it's not like one speaks Estonian, the other speaks English or German or whatever, this is not what I mean, but you, you lack the, the same way of communication. You lack workflows. Workflows might be completely different um, and your problem-solving strategies are completely different. Uh, one example. Um, in our academy we wanted to build a to do a, a curriculum for master studies and somehow they thought it was a good idea if I joined there. So we made a meeting, we had a meeting, yeah, we meet. 
And I just thought, okay, let's just go there and then let's brainstorm together. So what kind of ideas do you have? And then we come up with some nice stuff. Uh, and I was the only designer there, you know, um, and the other one, the other three people were all uh, computer scientists. And I was, uh, I was a little shocked because they came up already with complete plans. Like, you know, everything was set up. So even, even uh, uh, the schedule for the students which they would have if they would study this was already done. All the modules, everything. And I was like, huh? I, thought, I thought we meet here to, to brainstorm and to figure out what can, what can this thing be? What, how can we fill it with content? Okay? And then I came up with, and then I just said, hey, quite nice. Well, I have an idea. We could do this or this or that or that. And then, and then one guy said, oh, this is interesting. Yeah, let's put let's put this to to, to be. Let's let's make it this way. And I was like, but this was just an idea. I have no, you know, I thought myself, I have no clue how to do this. And I mean, this, and I I would like you to give me your feedback and so that I can, can incorporate your ideas. But they were like, oh, this, let's yeah, you, you do it. That's good. <laughs> so it's a completely different kind of, you know, how you approach those things, how you deal with those problems, and how you what are, what is your workflow. So this communication thing uh, is, is really, really uh, um, a problem. But there are also uh, ways how you can um, how you can uh, solve those. So first thing is you need so you so, so other way around. If you want to succeed, because usually you have a if you work in such a group, you have a task, and you want of course to succeed in this task. This is what you want to do. And in order to do so, your chances in succeeding are uh, uh, going up when you think about the following four points. First, is you need to have appropriate group members. This means that every, every one of those needs to be a specialist in their field. If you have like three specialists and one, no offense, student in the first semester, and you have three professors, this won't work out. Not only because of their knowledge, but in the way they see each other. They have to recognize each other all as professionals in their field, or at least all on eye level. Yeah? Otherwise, this won't work. They need all certain kind of soft skills, which means that they need to have the commitment and to have, like, let's say, um, leadership skills, but not in the way like, hey, let's go my way, but in the way of, of a mediator, you know, that you, that you are able to listen to what the others say. So, appropriate group member. So, this is really, this is vital in order to, to succeed there. Second thing is you need to establish some kind of uh, it's called well ground rules how they work together. Um, this depends of course highly on the topic where you want to go. Um, but in every team when you start, you should each of the members should have enough time to think about the problem and from their perspective. So we would like to build something. And everybody really looks at it from their perspective, thinking, okay, we could do it this way or that way, and then you bring the, the ideas together. It's not a good idea that you, you meet, you know, and, um, and then you try to come up with a, with, a, you know, with a strategy together. It's better if every person in this group uh, develops their own strategy, their own way, and then you come together and then you share those strategies. Um, and then you share that, exactly. So you need time beforehand for, for the individuals to actually deal with the whole topic. Um, and then this is, this is one, the third point is very much connected to this communication, which means that you uh, need to bridge the, those method, uh, the logical differences. This is exactly what happened to me, what I just explained in, in my example before. So you need some time to figure out, like, how do you do it? How would you do this? Well, we do it this way. How do you do it? You know? And then you can, you can talk about the basic com uh, concepts, uh, the modes of inquiry, for instance, how you come up with data, with knowledge in your field, because this is different in many fields. Um, and for this, you can, for instance, prepare what which is called a cognitive map. So this is basically, you present what is a problem in your field? Because a problem in the field of composition might be something completely different 
than a problem in the field of physics. You know, this is they 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 would like what is the problem there? You know, so this is completely different things. So this you need to to put on this cognitive map so that everybody knows. Uh huh. When you talk about this, this is meant. And when I talk about that, this is meant. Um, yeah, you can share your your techniques that you usually use. Your in some disciplines, it's important to have a standard of proof because. Uh, artistic research is something completely different than, than research in math because, or in physics because when you do something in physics this is, I call it regular science, okay? This is something where you have to, you know, somebody else on the planet regardless where and when needs to be able to repeat this experiment under these conditions and exactly the same result uh, should be there. In artistic research it's completely different because we don't care about those things. We care about completely other things, but this, these are these are uh, these are very very basic ground rules that you need to uh, explain and talk about before you even start work. Otherwise, it won't work. And of course, what we should do is we should promote um, some kind, of, well, let's call it infrastructural support in our academies um, and in our schools in order for those things to be not something special, but to be normal. So that the kids and, and our students are um, able to work in those kinds of things. Okay, so basically, that's it. That's what I want to say. So, but I have, um, so I have some questions now. <laughs> okay, so, um, <laughs> I'm pretty sure you all had this. Doesn't matter if you work on a team or if you just sat together at home or with some friends or people you know and you talk. And at some point you figured out that the other person has a completely different opinion about the topic you just talked about. We had this with vaccination, for instance. You know? So some people they say like, yeah, let's get vaccinated, and other people say like, no, 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 this is all poison. Okay? So same topic, vaccination, but two completely different opinions. Well, very far away from each other. So the question that I have is why is it so hard usually for us then to, and this is exactly something which happens here a lot, is to accept the other person's opinion or workflow or uh, way of dealing with problems. Why is, it, why is it so tricky for us to say like, oh, that's interesting, you know, why is it much easier for us to say, like, oh, <laughs> bullshit, go away, I don't want to do that. You know? what, what keeps us from, from being like open-minded, actually? What is it? Maybe we are afraid that our idea is uh, uh, better than the other one. And we want to prove yeah. ourselves yeah. that we are right, actually. And, like, uh, that's why we just, uh, just for because of the ikaksi hooks. Just in case, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just in case we... Well, you know, if, if you are competing in some way, I would say, like, okay, I can understand this. But if we go back to this, we are part of the same team. Yeah. And we want to reach the same goal. And we all, hopefully, want to do it in the best way possible. But still, these, exactly these mechanisms happen. Oh, maybe uh, the same problem you described, but uh, the different map languages, different situations. Uh, at first, it would be tricky. Yeah, it's hard, yeah? Because, because only if you know why this happens, then you can think about something, how to overcome this. And for me, still, this is this is one thing which I, which is really, uh, I don't know, it's really hard. <laughs> what is that? The, there's also something about identity, because you have like we tend to identify with our opinions. So if my opinion is not uh, immediately accepted, then you're actually not accepting me as the person. You know, like it's with me. Come on, I. I thought this with my own very beautiful brain, and uh, <laughs> if you disregard or like, disagree with that, then it means that you actually uh, don't like me or you know, like so that it's, 
I, I it's, it's, a, it's a difficult, uh, it's a difficult problem basically to kind of separate your ideas and opinions from yourself as a person, as an identity. And maybe it's even like inside of yourself you are afraid to let go of your identity, like you believe that uh, you are this. Uh, I, I'm the dancer, you know, like uh, whatever. But actually, I'm not anymore a dancer, and uh, I have to let it go to become this dancer or something. Yeah. yeah, I can uh, give a. Maybe the solution example, uh, for example, there is uh, when you need to relate for some old person who lost this uh, uh, this uh, short mind, for example, short term memory, short term memory, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and there is like uh, lots of people they are can't talk with uh, him or her because it's like a shivers because there is lots of uh, different things, different history time and blah, blah, blah. but there is a solution that yeah we just knock yes and just uh, like uh, talking uh, also I really can't understand at all but I'm just improvising I'm just talking yeah yeah yes and start to talk <laughs> something like uh, make a development uh, and actually the, the person is happy <laughs> yeah yeah. Okay. Okay. I mean, it's like maybe there, there is, uh, and it's, it's some kind of like uh, because you know, there is lots of time also that uh, where there's lots of different people. Yeah, there are points that uh, that I don't like. Maybe the the pros, but uh, mostly it's so that I don't like to do it this way. But it's not the problem. How when uh, it's it's only for me. But I understand. It's it's a, it's a okay for him or her this how is the solution is done but I, I'm I'm just logging okay I'm doing my way <laughs> and it, it's going something's gonna happen anyway yeah <laughs> Maybe this so, is yeah it. well it's, yeah. yeah yeah but then then again you basically are still here yeah I, yeah I was thinking right? so I was thinking every, but everybody does it his or her but, way but and but then the end this is it works out but but I understand that you you want to reach that uh, that means that we have we must have a new language, well, which are you know we, which are universal for us. I mean, which not which somewhere third part of uh, discipline. <laughs> well, yeah, the, the basic idea behind it is that that again problems are so difficult that you need basically you need to have something like this yeah, where you reach. come up with something yeah. completely new, yeah. which is, yeah. of yeah. course, very, very tricky to come up yeah. with anything new, right? But once in a while it happens, yeah? So, the internet... This is I and ideal situation. Yeah? So, yeah. To, to come up with something like that and to build something new in order to be able to solve those problems. But isn't there also that um, uh, this idea that if you lose, I lose, actually, to really understand that we are together, yeah. and then define the area of the problem wider, not only like either we vaccinate or not, but what to do, all this climate, all this kind of how this, you know, just together, so it's like, like a, one has to win, the other has to win, this won't work anyway. And so. Yeah, but this is tricky. Yeah, this is <laughs> I mean, this is one of the most trickiest part, right? Yeah. To, to give this. I mean, if, if, if you're in here, you know, you are already sitting around the round table, right? Or here, it doesn't matter where, but you know, you're sitting around already around. But to get there even is sometimes hard, you know? Because if your boss tells you, oh, you have to work in this interdisciplinary team right now, and you're like, who is there? Well, there are sociologists and there's a marketing. Marketing? Oh, no, not a marketing guy. I hate marketing. <laughs> because they have they have really their own language right mm -hmm. I mean marketing people they have their own language there is there is there are I don't know do you know those things in uh, on websites called bullshit generator and you should you just you know there's a marketing bullshit generator in German at least and it spits you out like sen sentences where you think like oh my god and this is full of this this marketing speech kind of thing it's amazing. but okay market no no I, I like to work with marketing people <laughs> <laughs> but you see, of course, you know, we, we, have, we have all have our prejudices, but this is exactly the state that we do just described that we should achieve. To stand back and to say like, hey, let's have a look. It's, the problem is bigger than ourselves and our disciplines, so let's accept the other one as he or she is. But this is, I, I, I we, we're not taught the, this way. That's I just feel like when I go back to actual art making, which is more concrete, that 
in one point I have to kind of lose my ambition actually it's come and, and like we just had this uh, piece uh, in the beach and uh, there were like, different artists really poets and uh, and there is like whoever of us could have had a vision actually we, we didn't know like we didn't know what would come but luckily also we didn't have rehearsal before the performance day so we just fantasized and it was really a practical rehearsal for this like, let's just go and let's Let's see what comes, and uh, and uh, yeah. But uh, no, the question like, was it visible for the others? You know, that's that's a different topic. But like this practicing, this idea that we are together for something, and there is value in that, even if we don't know yet uh, how to solve that, like uh, how to name it completely. But, uh, yeah. Can it be that the biggest problem actually is in this intra? Because uh, I think uh, hardest is to be specialist in one field. And this is actually the problem. But because uh, when, when you don't have any field in what you are specialist, you don't work also together with others. So uh, it's my op opinion. Yeah, but yeah. Interest interestingly, when you look at, those, mm -hmm. uh, at the biographies of, not all of course, but of some specialists and inventors in their field, For instance, because I'm now working with a lot with computer science uh, scientists, there is this, this German guy who before Second World War invented the first computer, which was basically a machine, a very big machine. And then after Second World War, near the, the academy where I work now, um, uh, there he built those machines. And actually, when I, I thought like he's, a, he's of course, he's an engineer or something like that. But actually, what he did before, he was doing advertising. He was a painter, and, a, and a, you know, mm -hmm. a, a really good one, actually. His advertisements, he made big advertisements in the 20s and 30s for Ford and, and, and for big companies in Germany, you know. And I was like, whoops, yeah. So he, of course, he had a completely engineering mindset, but at the other hand, he was really a creative person. And, um, and sure, it's all in you then, you know. You can't just tear it apart. So now I'm the engineer, and now I'm the painter. It's all in you, so it, you know, you... you take what you need in order to, to succeed, whatever you want to do, you know? Yeah, but uh, people can uh, deal with things also silently. We don't know this often. It is, it is often very surprising for other people. Wow, this person is very competent in cosmology, for example. We don't know that because this people is dealing with this itself. It is, it is often these biographies are, are uh, written from... Uh, site for other site some surprising biographist but for, for these people maybe it, it, it was engineer yeah, yeah. from beginning and also this entertainment was as engineer maybe. Uh, made, made. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but still I, I think uh, the biggest problem is to be professional in some field and, and then uh, then it's possible okay then when, we, when I have one professionality then maybe I can have second mm -hmm. and I, I can also start to understand uh, other fields. To work in a team like that, you yeah, don't yeah. necessarily need to have a second discipline. No. Oh, and of but, course, but uh, some, some things, kind of the open... Things to, yeah, the things to yeah. remain yeah. basically open. To say like yeah. hey, Open-minded, of yeah, course. Yeah, it is, it is yeah. second, very important. Yeah, but that's, uh, that's yeah. exactly. yeah. And it feels also that we don't really know where the click is happening or something that maybe we did something and it didn't feel right uh, quite there yet but maybe it fueled something to somebody and uh, then the next uh, moment like how this process actually is happening at, uh, at the, 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 because i don't know like computer also probably was not uh, like a linear somebody thought uh, it's just <laughs> so emerging from this and then the error accident um, is uh, essential Yeah. But it's kind of getting together, maybe, or trying. <laughs> But I have also a question for all. Uh, have you some kind of... Uh, we theoretically know what is interdisciplinarity now. We know that interdisciplinarity is, by your definition, is that we use uh, some methods or some way of thinking in some other discipline. I am yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. I understand right. Yeah. 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 yeah, and also we are. We can talk that uh, object of our activity is happened still in in border of two disciplines. It is. It is not so that uh, it is pure 
Now, for example, uh, when we have music with text, it is not text alone and it is not music, no, 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 uh, not only sounds alone, but it's something in border of, of this. And maybe, okay, it is, it is used, uh, this text, uh, ideas in music and etc. So, please, uh, have you some experience of this kind of situation that you have used? That is, it was an open question for all, for our seminar. Have you, Christian, you, some kind of, uh, this kind of experience? You, you, are, you are dealing with music, you are dealing with visuals. Have you uh, this kind of uh, situations that uh, you can't uh, define very exactly in what domain this object, your activity actually is? And how I how are, are used uh, these uh, two fields, for example, or three? Well, well, there are two things. First thing is, of course, as you described already, when you do this on your own for your own projects, you know, then you have this sometimes, that you utilize weapons or tools from another discipline. Mm -hmm. yeah, for instance, a very, very simple example, uh, you want to compose something and you think about what to do and, uh, and then you take mathematical operations for the composition process, like real mathematical uh, stuff, uh, algorithms or something like that. But you really like, you put something in, you hit the button, it calculates and gives you like that, 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 and tells you, for instance, how to structure something over time. But this is for you. This is on your own, basically. I mean, this is this is something that you can do, and that I th I think artists or creative people usually do anyhow. But on a professional level, I only had this experience when I worked together in groups with people from different disciplines. Uh, but then it was rather this multi stuff. So you know, there were people. We had we had a task, and then it was very quickly figured out who is good in what. Okay, so you do this part, you write, you paint, you do whatever, and in the end we put everything together and we have our presentation or whatever. You know, so this is done. So this, is, this was rather that. To be honest, something really like this, to work together with several people towards one common goal, several people from different disciplines, and we, it is a really fruitful um, thing, where we, I never had this, because either it was all basically in this art discipline, and we had people from different kind of arts, but still we were in the arts, so I don't think this is exactly what is meant here, you know, because art, even if you're a singer, writer, whatever, you know, if you're in this creative field, you know, uh, I never had this. And, and this, not at all. But it's quite interesting that uh, you almost thought that oh, I, I have done it myself, like it's in, in, okay inside of myself, but the, then it feels like the, the disciplines are almost like people are the uh, boundaries or something that, uh, that the people discipline. I, I had this yeah, vision, yeah. like <laughs> it, it is exactly this that uh, somehow because we live together and we have so close and we try and uh, fail and do things together, it's very different that, that there is a, a different artist. And you have to start all over again. And uh, e even if uh, they might be much more brilliant in this other discipline, it's easier for us and uh, the, some new things to emerge because we just have the language here. So trust. Time. Trust is something yeah. there. Exactly. And time. The time, time of course. Trust. Time. time yes, it's very, very important in this one. Yeah. I think, I think I, for me, I think that's maybe one of the key elements, like to bring together and to kind of reach the kind of interdisciplinarity thing, you need to have a group that trusts each other and works together for a long time. Um, I, to I, fully understand what the other... Yeah, to really, yeah. To really uh, have time to digest the thing, to open up their perspectives and to allow that to actually filter in to a time aspect. And you mentioned it also yeah. uh, a bit before that, uh, that it's uh, necessary to have time for each individual member also to kind of process the problem area to then put it in. But then, of course, after that, you need time for that to really kind of percolate through the group and resonate with uh, what the other people are, are doing. It. So, uh, yeah, so, the, so again, it comes down to resources, to uh, acquaintance, to um, ability to spend a lot of time together. In a way, um, the basic idea, because I, I went there, but of course, the basic idea is 100 years ago, in Bauhaus, 
university, mm -hmm. they had some approach like that, right. that they put together those masterminds in their field, but it, additionally, the guys that teach them not only the conceptual work, but also teach them the handcrafts, and to enable them to use these things that they learned, to enable to use them in different areas. It's not really disciplines, but at least in different areas. So. So in, in some art academies it still works this way, but usually, or I don't know, but sometimes in art academy it doesn't, because you go to one professor because you like his work or her work, you go to this person alone and they teach you, and you have nothing to do with the others. You, you know, you, don't, you go basically to a school within your art academy, which is sad, in a way, I think. It is how it Ideas? I, I just, um, I don't know how it relates to this, but somehow for me, like, the, just one brilliant example of uh, 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 Thomas Rottenberger is to, uh, using to describe uh, the whole process of synthesis, uh, synthesizing knowledge, basically, um, that you need to um, get the thesis, antithesis, synthesis, which is uh, a kind of a higher level, or like a, you need to kind of uh, step up one dimension of complexity. Way. And uh, the, you know, the example he's using basically is like if you live in a two-dimensional world on a piece of paper, and if somebody brings in a cylinder, you will see it either as a circle or as a rectangle or a square of some sort. And uh, you need to be able to then go from two dimensions to three dimensions to fully grasp what that cylinder actually is. So there's something about that uh, thing here that you know when you kind of start to loop over again, you start to loop over again, but it's on a higher dimensional <coughs> level, you incorporate more complexity yeah. into, the, yeah, that's, yeah. into the system that you, uh, that you brought to kind of in, uh, integrate, it, integrate the knowledge, but it's still not back to square one, it's back to square one squared. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> yes, yeah, of course. And also between the individual collective, what you talked about, that there is a time for me to integrate the new knowledge or something, to go out again and be safe in the new... Uh, yeah, or maybe, or maybe even this takes a generation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the problem is we don't have the, yeah. the time yeah. anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, 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 yeah. The clock's ticking. Clock is ticking. Yeah. Exactly. That's that's a little that's a little tricky. We're not we don't have the, the weapons actually, the tools to really do this. But um, at least we can try. Yeah. I would say that's it. No? Thank you. I mean, that's absolutely great. Kuna ma saan aru, meie ronke kalgab küll neli siit, et äkki ei räägiks korra noora ole, et sa räägime korra selle asjaga läbi. Siin on Märk Seppär ja Vene Kiitsu. Väga tore. Ma tulin juba varakud. Mul ei tegelikult paar teemalt ripeltama, aga ma olin sellest uuletajatele eras ja rääkida. Sest kuidas üks jäsenaga. Noh, Anno Vihalemast, kes ma kogu aeg räägin, et tema intervissi. Ära räägi eraldi, räägi, räägi, kui sa ei taha üst... Ma tuleb see eesti keeles rääkida. Räägi, räägi, aga Kristjan saab aru, et... Kuskil... Ilmise vabariigi võtma ja see Eestis esimese kommunikaal oli Pärnus Sõnuks Ege. Ja siis oli Pärnus Sõnuks Ege. Ja siis oli Pärnus Sõnuks Ege. Ja siis oli Pärnus Sõnuks Ege. Lulete Anno Vihalem ja tema oli ka graafik ja maailmasti. Ja siis ta üks päev võttis kätte, aga siis ta oli muidugi juba kauluses. Et ta põhilisama loomingus tegi siis Rootsi seladas. Ja ta tahtis nagu, ikka on olnud kooks see probleem, et kunstnikud nagu tulevad kommentaare näitustel, et ei saa aru midagi, kui vaatad seda pilt, kui vaatad toda, mida kaasaks on just õnne, eks ju, et mitte midagi aru ei saa. Noh, võibolla on kaasaks, kui või selle muusikaga on nagu saamoodi pilti peale. Ja siis temast kolmekümned, ei, kus teksin, see oli viiekümned lõppe siis tegi ühes üks tsükli oma luule kogus pealkireks seletamised. Ja ta tegi oma pildid, seal on üks on nagu must ruud peagu, must vist üli, eesti must ruud, nii-öelda. Ja ta tegi iga pildi kohta siis ühe luuletuse nagu seletuseks, aga see ei olnud üldse mingi selline nah täiesti nagu üks ühele, vaid see oli hästi sõike fantastiline, täiesti niimoodi lisab interpretatsioon, aga ta tahtis nagu, et need vaatajad 
võtaksid loovalt nagu vastu pilt, et noh, ta tahtis nagu ees kui näidada, et kuidas võiks ütta nagu pilti nagu nagu seletada või interpreteerida ja siis mina nagu jäin ka sellele mõtisklema, et kuna ta tegi selle tsükki täiesti niimoodi, et nagu nagu koos õnnetud luuletus, et selles mõttes ei eksist eviks üksi päris hästi, sest ta saal ütleb, et siin on üks mees, et noh, et mul usutaks, et ta peaks inimene peaks ta pilti vaatama, et see täiesti must pilt seal oli üks mees, kes siis tõub kalab õhus püssiruu tünnil, et ta ei saa tult põlem panna, et muidu kõik oleks vaatavad nagu laiali, et sellemast on see pilt nagust. Ja noh, selles suhtes mõlemas pidi see, et noh, täiesti sõike, noh, mis siis on, eks ole pildid, luuletused, aga nad on koos nagu planeeritud, nende eesmärk on nagu üks ja mina nimetaks küll neid nagu interdisiplinaalseks teosteks seda süklit. Et ei ole mitte mingi peent elektronikat ega programmeerimist, aga noh, see oli siis selline aeg. Või on ta ikkagi see mult, võibolla on ta ikkagi see multi, vaata, ma olen praegu Kristjani jutus, see on aru, et inter tähendab ikkagi selles selle definitsiooni järgi, kus ühe sõna ka luule või teksti komponeerimisel on kasutatud mingisugused näiteks visuaalsuse vahendeid. Jah, aga tähendab või meetodeid. Visuaalsus on seal teksti mõttes sees. Ma ta meie ei tea nüüd ka. Teksti tähendus. Seda luuletust lugeda hästi, aga ma kuidagi saab, aga pilti vaadata ilma tekstid üldse ei saab. No saab tegelikult, aga kõik saab, aga midagi juurde. Teiseks meie ei tea ka, kas ta tegi need korraga või tegi ühe ennem või tegi teise. Aga ta pani nad kokku. Aga ta pani nad kokku. See on vajadav, aga sellest ma tahtsin juhtuda selleni, et see tiimid on ju. Aga noh, tihti on ka sellist mõistnika, kes teevad seda sama mitmest distinist koosnud või ühest teiseks minevad või teiesti koostööjad täsin nagu ühes üks isik nagu one person doing this interdisciplinaarsus võibolla see on isegi see transdisciplinaarsus siis juba ma ka kaju pigem kisub kisub minu aeg seda siia quite interesting what is going on there because first when I started to write poetry then one colleague said to me No, you can do all the programs with uh, poetry and music and so on. I, I absolutely doubted it because uh, for me it was very separately here, this world and this world. But uh, somehow uh, very quietly it started to uh, come closer and now I, I also try to mix them together. But I wanted to ask you, because you do uh, poetry and you improvise, uh, do you also have, sometimes music gives you source for, because I understand the poems give source for the yeah. music, but is it also the vice versa, that the music, sometimes you play something and they get a vision or, or, or work? Or uh, it can be, but uh, I think uh, I'm, I'm in this process and I, I'm looking forward to kind of things that you see. Research. Yeah. Yeah. For me then. Sainjale vihale maastrad. Yeah, that's... Sain välja. It's a question like, is it possible for one person to be into this or... Well, it's not almost by definition. It needs to be. It is a group. It is basically everything about it. Maybe if he or she is open or something. Dual personality. That was a little bit like this. Like what we did in our previous books. Like you know, since since each of us are since each of us was already several, there was already quite a crowd. In some sense, maybe it is possible. Like if you think of a person as a very complex entity, you know, same systems in different levels. Lots of different levels, you know. Like so, because for me, like what I, um, I think like like how how we we work also like in terms we had we really had to discover a workflow for working with all this technology. get into a studio you don't want to be bogged down in bug hunting not too much at least you know like and uh, so that like we'll be in, arriving to it so we we take quite a substantial time to just program develop stuff then we're going to the studio use it uh, work on it and then we'll go back out again and then we'll keep programming you know so there's this uh, 
uh, this kind of uh, feedback loop where we are actually, in some sense, different people at different stages of the, of the process. Uh, I would say so. You know, so there's of course an interdisciplinary element to it, but of course it's. Uh, yeah. It's again a kind of a, uh, you know. And in some point, we just have to let it go, thing. like to just do our thing, yeah, get, like as artists at least. Like, but when you're gonna solve a specific problem, it's a different story. But yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it, it, it highly depends on the discipline. I mean, on, on what, what, what disciplines are involved in what the task is. This is just a... Yes. Yeah. It's just a day. It's a problem. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a